Oh, hello everyone. Welcome. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Uh, my name is Ettore. I'm, I'm the educational minister for the study medicine uh, suit. I'm very happy to, to present uh, you all our core um, learning here at the Blizzard. Um, I'm also um, uh, I'm here with uh, two of our academics, it's, uh, Vania, uh, Dr. Vania Dolmedo and Dr. Haider San, together with uh, our um, marketing uh, um, officer, uh, David Bell. So I'm sorry, I'm a little bit um, excited to see you all around. All right, um, so uh, welcome. Uh, this um, I'm very happy to present you our study medicine for 22-23. Uh, next slide, please. So this is our Blizzard Institute. Uh, it's composed of uh, three buildings. And the main one is the, uh, the, the core facilities. The one on the top left is a very new top of the art uh, lab where uh, we are sixth in, first in UK and sixth overall. Um, it's, it's, it's an amazing um, lab. You can see it all around uh, top below. Uh, full equipped with all the full equipped and full of labs. And uh, we also have the Garrett building. And it's again, it's, it's, it's big and we have uh, a huge place where you can, I hope you can come when we're going to have our uh, optional simulation training. And we're going to have um, a great, great experience there. Okay, next, please. Right, now, uh, the, we have three aesthetic programs. One is a PG Certificate Aesthetic Medicine, uh, which is composed of uh, four uh, modules, uh, 60 credits in total. Um, it, they, they la it lasts for eight months. It's part-time, it's all distance learning. But um, we have one optional training we're going to discuss at the end of this uh, presentation. Then we have the PG Diploma. Uh, it's going to be... Uh, over two years. Again, it's part-time, seven weeks uh, each model, and it's going to work 120 credits, uh, level seven postgraduate. And then, uh, finally, we have a cherry on the cake, which is the master degree in aesthetic medicine. It's two years again, but at the end of it, you're going to have a dissertation. Um, I'm proud to say that a lot of dissertations have been published um you're gonna be followed uh, followed by our supervisor we have a, we have all clinicians and i'm sure they're gonna help you out in finding your way and hopefully giving your best and um achieve your uh, goal next slide please so uh, again i present myself my name is Ettore. hello again and then we have our program director dr yanis gudos and then all academic stuff. Um, they will follow you throughout the, the your course. So you're gonna have uh, supervise for the dissertation, but you will also have uh, every week you're gonna have webinars or seminars all online. And plus, if you need any help, both academic or admin, we are here to help. Uh, next slide, please. Now. First year, we're going to have these four models. I'm sure um, our academics will explain them in depth, but they cover the major um, aspects of our study medicine uh, science. Could um, I not say physiology, healing and scarring, and sorry, and aging, non-invasive technique, uh, aesthetic dermatology, laser and energy-based devices. And we, we, we try to improve uh, our content every year because, as you all know, uh, SI Medicine is, is a very interesting and uh, all ever uh, developing um, uh, medicine. So we always uh, upload, uh, up, upload and update our content in order to meet this ever-changing uh, field. Next slide, please. 
And this is for year two. Year two, for the four models uh, will uh, are the same for the PG diploma and the master science. And physio uh, psychological and medical legal aspects, regenerative and cell-based approach, advanced aesthetic modalities and principles of effective career. Again, um, especially the last one, we, we, we try our best to give you insights of what uh, uh, what, how, it, how it works to be, yeah, to be in a career in a study. So that would be the cherry on the cake for your year. And then finally, the dissertation. Next slide, please. Again, all modules uh, will last seven weeks. Uh, all will be delivered by weekly presentation. Every, every week we're gonna have at least, at least one webinar or presentation and throughout throughout the model you're gonna have your um, mcq which stands for um, multiple choice questions which is uh 18 of your overall mark then at the end of the the seven weeks you're gonna have to present a uh, written assessment worth two thousand words and you're gonna the questions uh, you're gonna you're gonna present will be uh, based on the content you will you as you've been studying and then at the end of the year usually be, be, within the first two weeks of may there will be the oscars which is an oral assessment uh, and there you will be um you'll be faced with multiple multiple uh questions on the work you have been doing so far during the year this uh, oral assessment will be coming every year. So year one will oh, will have their uh, OSCEs uh, for the first four models. And then after you pass them, uh, again, sorry, I forgot, uh, they are qualifying mark. You have to pass the oral, exam, oral assessment in order to pass the exam over, the model overall. <laughs> and then uh, same, same works for the second year. Yeah, next slide. And these are our um, final, these are our, the, the university we uh, support for you. We have uh, multiple uh, support. Um, but I wanna, I wanna stress the library services. We have, we have an amazing uh, library and you can find a lot, not all, but most of the books or journal articles you were looking for. And it's all available online 24 seven. And that's outstanding. Next slide. And for your representation, you always be uh, asked to give us some feedback proposals and you can share your ideas with your fellow students throughout the year. And you're gonna be supported for, by the union by the student union and there will be a committee of students for your specifically for your course and uh, whereby you can find solution if you think uh, something is not uh, is not as the way it should be you can always refer to them and next and that's it it's gonna be amazing and i'm sure our academics now will try to explain you in more detail what the content is and how we will work. Thank you. Thank you, Ettore. My pleasure. So just let's see if we have any uh, questions from the students or for the delegates. Yeah? You can switch your microphone on if you want to ask any questions. Or you can type. Hello. I have a question. Hello. Hi, yeah. Um, I'm a registered plastic surgeon in China and also registered nurse in China. And I did my master's degree in 2016 at Coventry University for healthcare management. 
I'm now doing for the PhD course is health and well-being in Wolverhampton University. I don't know if I can join this course or not. You said that you were a plastic surgeon. Yes, in China. Uh, Itori? I'm Sorry, plastic surgeon so in China. Can you hear me? Yes. You were so you were a plastic surgeon surgeon in China. Yes. yes. And do you practice there? Yes. And uh, I, I don't know, I can join this course or not, because I'm working at the moment in the private clinic in UK, and I'm also working at China Hospital. You don't need to be practicing the UK to join the course, if that's what you want to know. Yeah, I just want to know. Do I, uh, but you have to have a medical qualification. Yes, but my register in China, not in here. It's okay. Okay, no problem. This is question. Yeah, but then, of course, the documentation and all that, I think uh, a, um, a Tory can clarify, right? Yes, okay. uh, just a quick uh, comment here. I mean, uh, regarding uh, the registration, are you registered with GMC here in UK or not? Not. Okay, so it just, I mean, the only thing that we have here about the English test. Yeah, because I was did a master degree at Coventry University in the UK uh, yeah. five years before, or six years before. Okay, I think you should be fine later with the English test. Yeah, she has she already should, postgraduate. If, I think if you have done your MSc here in the UK, you may have your IELTS and your English, um, you know, um, tests already. So you just have to check if tick all the boxes, right? Um, yeah, I'm not sure if uh the university accepts um ielts or master degrees later than three years that's, oh, okay that's yeah that's, that's something that needs to be clarified yeah it's better yeah. than you think yeah yeah thank yeah. you thanks not at all anyway no it's um it's, it should be very easy to apply for another ielts your english is quite good already so okay thank you, know. you. I'll be okay. oh, thank you Right, so there are a few questions here. There is one question, uh, um, do we need to come to the UK in real person to do the exam? Mm -hmm. Right, due to the, I can answer this one, due to the pandemic, um, we, uh, for the past two years, we uh, done the OSCIS online. But the plan is that as soon as thing, you know, uh, restrictions were lifted, etc., then we just go back to what we had before. But that's something that's not really a hundred percent decided. Is that correct, Sorry, But the that plan is would be, yeah, the plan in previous years, uh, I'll tell you historically, is that these students would come to the UK uh, and do the exam. But that's something that used to happen before the pandemic. And the last two OSCEs we done online, the same as the um, the training days. Yeah. Um... We have to say that um, OSCE online were, were uh, work pretty well. So yeah, yeah, I agree. We still have we still have to decide that. But at the moment, as we know it, with the pandemic on course, we still have uh, on um, we still have this uh, policy where we're gonna be online. But um, mm -hmm. as of now. But we cannot say until we know further. Yeah, that's 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 what I can okay, what I can say. Yeah, there's a lot of things that's a bit out of our hands. That the university, you know, regulations and things. So we will ask to do due to the restrictions. We decided to do online, and it has actually worked quite well. But we don't know how the university will, um, you know, what's going to happen now. Yeah, it's out of our hands. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. There's another question here about the English entry requirements. I have six academic IELTS score and um, I don't know, you asked me if it's okay to apply. I can't answer this one, sorry. Uh, uh, that's something uh, to do with more with the registration. We can't guarantee that you can apply, right? Yeah, or you the, can the apply, problem, but... Yeah, totally. you can apply, but the, the minimum requirement is 6.5 uh, IELTS. Yeah. Oh, general and at least 6.5 in uh, writing 
I'm, I'm not sure about that, but um, you can check on our website. And that's the minimum to understand what we talk about. And, you know, there are a lot of um, medicine Writing. content. Writing, yeah. yeah. So that's the minimum. I think we replied to their well-being team. OSCE will be done online. We just don't know. We can't uh, 100% confirm that it's going to be done online. Mm -hmm. And there's a question from Karen. Can you kind of explain how the OSCE format will be like? Vittori? Yeah. Um, you will be examined on... You will be... Okay. First of all, it's going to be an oral assessment. You will be assessed by two of our uh, academics. Um, you're going to have to answer four uh, multiple questions. It could be one question, it could be multiple questions. And you have uh, seven minutes uh, each module. So the question could be multiple. You could be um, an assessment of what you could apply or um, a specific question about the... Um, knowledge of, I don't know, lasers. Clinical scenario. Clinical scenarios, mm -hmm. laser, well, how to apply laser, etc. And seven minutes, it's, each is going to be seven minutes for each model. So it's going to yeah. be pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's good to emphasize that the, what we ask at the OSCE exams is nothing that you haven't actually been um, shown during the course. It's all module content. And uh, sometimes we do have give you recommended reading and webinars. So everything that has been presented to you during the module is part, it could be asked at the office. But it's not complicated. Any other question here? Okay, there is one here. The last module is about the business side of the aesthetic medicine, question mark. Um yes, this is a new module, right? So, Ettore, can you explain that? Um, uh, okay, yeah. Basically, this model will help you in um, assessing um, how it's it going to give you insights or insight on what how to prepare you for the business, how to prepare you to deal with your future customers, etc. How to, that, that would be the main one. I'm not sure if uh, Dr. Asan wants to add something about that. Yes, I agree with you, Territory. It's about the management of your uh, practice, or if you want to create aesthetic medicine practice, what is the requirement, how to register this practice, the marketing, uh, the medical legal aspects of the marketing. Uh, so we discuss all of these uh, points uh, in a practical way, and uh, we can have like some clinical-based discussion or like um, uh, some videos to discuss all these aspects. Uh, so it will be very easy uh, and important maybe uh, model for uh, the new graduated after the MSc program. So I think it's very important. I totally agree with you. This type of education, we don't have it in our medical or dental school. Yeah, so I think that's very, a very great, great addition to, to the curriculum. That's, that's for sure, yeah. So, Thank you. do you want me to carry on reading the questions? Please. <laughs> I'm yeah. happy to do that. Thanks. Uh, Thanks more questions about the English. Um, I have GMC full registration. Do I still need English? I got my registration in 2018. No, um, no, no? you don't. No. 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 Okay. Um, if we apply for master master degree, do we have to submit the dissertation by the end of year two? Yeah, that's yes. the plan. Yes. And usually, you, sorry, sorry, Doctor yeah. uh, Usually, uh, the first of August. Yes, the, the, you, there is a deadline, of course, and you have time because you will have. If you plan to write the dissertation, then you have things in mind, <laughs> not last minute. Um, do you accept OET? I never heard of that occupational English test as proof of English. Do you know anything about that? Yes, I mean, once you have registration with GMC and GDC, now they are doing the 
uh, OET uh, test instead of IELTS, which is similar to IELTS. So just, I mean, once you pass this exam, you will get your registration with GMC or GDC or NMC. So it will be like automatically accepted by our university. Okay. So it's similar to IELTS. Yes. Uh, there are more questions about English here. Uh, okay, can my new MD graduate join this program? Yes. Um, if I graduated from English taught course for MD, do I still need to take the IELTS test? No. But does it mean, what about if it's yeah. not in the UK? Yeah, that's a good question. question. Yeah, if it's not in the UK, then they need to provide that, right? That's okay. That's, um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Also, brother, yeah. all, our, all our foreign students, they have to... I'm okay, yeah. you... But I mean, it's very important if like MD from Australia, US, New Zealand, yeah. uh, the Commonwealth, I mean, the countries is accepted. It depends on your yeah, university. Yeah. yeah. And if our university... But surely, uh, but surely the registration um, department could give you quite a detailed information about this, right? So maybe we can even uh, guide these students with a, a link or, or an email address. Yeah. Sure. So then, uh, and if you have if you have any confusion, just apply and send the question. And when we see that the, the application, uh, the admission team will send you all the question if you have any if they have any questions. Yeah. Yeah. And as a rule of thumb, provide... as a base, sorry, uh, to conclude, as a basis, if your course has been taught in English, then you are allowed not to take another IELTS test. Well, as, oh, a, as, a general, as a general, as a general, depends know. depends on the university if the university accepted by Queen Mary University or not. Yeah. Exactly, that's okay. Okay, so do you provide a concurrent hands-on practice to these students if they are based in the UK? Hey, uh, I think Vanya, this is your <laughs> your yeah. field because this is the uh, related to the. I can I can answer that. Well, yeah. we don't provide a hands-on practice. Um, what we do provide is uh, we have some uh, simulation training uh, where you have two days per year and we organize the past two years. It had to be online, but it worked quite well. The online had the opportunity for us to invite people, uh, you know, experts in aesthetic medicine from all over the world and it was much easier than bringing them to London um, but yes the plan is that we could do this face to face because we have done this in the past and it worked really well so this is the the hands-on component when I say hands-on um, it doesn't mean that you're going to be injecting on a live model but it's the simulation training where we can use the, the silicon head or you can have video or live demo that's the plan now so uh, we don't have any specific hands-on uh, training concurrent or parallel to the course, um, but we do provide these training days that usually two days uh, per year. I don't know if um, Andy, if this actually answered your question, but feel free to just type or answer anything else, okay? How is the dissertation subject chosen and can we propose a field of study? Do you wanna answer that, Heida? Yes, I mean, this is like a free. We have already like uh, some uh, suggestions. You can choose one of them if you want, but we are always, I mean, welcome if you have any clinical study or any like evidence-based study, any subject. I mean, I think it's very, very important to have uh, 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 a dissertation which related to the subject that you are working with or you are interested with. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to tell you, I mean, that... Uh, 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 we have too many now, too many students, they publish their studies, I mean, which is like clinical and evidence-based study. So for one dissertation, so we can publish two studies. So I think it's very important to choose anything that you, I mean, you prefer. However, if you can't, we have some suggestion and we can help you with that one. Yeah, we have an extensive list of uh, subjects and, you know, you will find that if you want to write about certain things in the beginning of the course, but as the course goes, you know, by you get module one or two, you find whatever you find in module three may be more interesting and if you're going to change the subject. So, so it's keeping an open mind about the topic. Um, I think, uh, Sherry, we, we have uh, answered your question about the hands-on. Abdes Nasiri, yes, you can switch your video and ask a question, please. 
Hi. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? So I have a question. So you said just GDC and GMC. What about for the pharmacist? I mean, we can't apply. I mean, I'm working in cosmetic clinic for almost two years, but I'm a pharmacist I'm in aesthetic medicine. I've been working in clinics, so that's why I actually wanted to you know, extend my skills. So how does it work? Because I was reading the website, it says something about nurses and also, you know, doctors and dentists, but I couldn't find anything about pharmacists. I can answer this question. I'm afraid, uh, Abbas, yes. um, we definitely need a degree, either in nursing, nursing or a medical degree. Okay. That's because of the, um, of the, that, the content is the, the content is very very otherwise you wouldn't you wouldn't understand the content it's, it's very deep it's very deep um that's there's a lot of medicine involved yeah and i think it's more to do with the whatever the the university actually allows us to you know the, the type of students that we can take yeah i'm sure you know i know it's always said that it's complicated but i'm sure being a pharmacist is you know you have a lot of knowledge and you would probably easily yeah. you know follow this but i do think that i'm afraid that that's not really on the, on the list yet I, I i have to say not just i mean the knowledge i mean the injectable hand they have very nice that's what i'm saying uh, I've been working. Yeah, what i'm saying is i've been because i've been working in a cosmetic clinic for two years mm. actually i'm doing the same thing so yeah so we if we just you know that's i mean i i'm not responsible for the admissions but that's what they say and we just have to follow that i'm afraid yeah thank yeah, you very so much. Sorry, thanks for your question anyway yeah thank you have a nice one bye um okay uh lord tequila okay just wanted to know if i can get a list of uh, recommended books and website resources which will help me complete the course successfully yes obviously uh, once you start the course, you're going to be provided with a list of uh, recommended, apart from the references that is being used for each module, you're going to receive a recommended reading list, which will be part of your module material. And um, and after we each webinar, you're going to have the references as well. So that's not a problem. Yeah, you're going to be uh, provided all that, not before you start the course, but when you start the course, according to the module that you are you're doing. Um, okay, um, are these courses good for doctors who have never worked in aesthetic? Do you want to, do you want to answer that, Pedro? Yes, I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, the, the, my answer, why not? I mean, the knowledge that you get, I think, is very important for you to start your, your career in aesthetic medicine. So for me, when I started, I uh, did this course before, I had some experience in aesthetic medicine, but I had too many uh, lack in knowledge that I found it within this course. So I hope that I had this course before I started my uh, experience in aesthetic medicine. So I, I really, um, uh, I mean, recommend everyone, I mean, to have theoretical, background plus the practical background but don't start with the practical part without theoretical knowledge because that you can deliver a safe not effective I'm, I'm sure that everyone can inject very well but the problem is how to deliver a safe treatment not I mean the effective treatment so within this course I mean we, sh we, we will discuss all the safety I mean and the efficiency of each treatment modalities so here we focus on the safety before the efficiency so yes my question my answer is why not why not but also um what i find is that uh, yes you you're going to get a lot of knowledge uh, this is an academic course this is you know it's not a weekend botox or demo filler course where you're going to go start injecting so it's very important that you don't get confused or maybe you can manage your expectations or on the practical side is that correct, Hayda? Because, you know, totally you're going to have a lot of knowledge, but yes, you still it's... needed to do things parallel, you know, you needed to yeah. attend um, um, hands-on courses. courses, you yes, needed to attend practical courses, courses yeah. and this is a part of your aesthetic career, so you can't expect that you're attending this and then you'll be able to inject. 
you know yeah, you'll be I'll able to know agree. everything that to 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 practice safe, safely and efficiently but mm -hmm. you still need that this is an academic course yeah but why not right and um, how do we make proof how do we make proof gdc equivalent registration in other country well you can't because gdc is the general dental council in the uk so you need if you have a, if you're registered with the gdc then yes you, i think when you do the your registration then i'm sure you they will ask for proof that but if it's from the other country then it's not gdc is that correct yeah it's different different registration but absolutely you can't send us a copy do you hear me now yeah do you hear me now yeah no i can't do oh, hear you. <laughs> you can't hear me i you can hear i can, me, I can, uh, I can. Uh, sorry okay can you hear okay. yeah uh, okay, so what I'm saying here, I mean, about uh, the GDC registration, I mean, uh, yes, it will not be like GDC registration in Spain or in Venezuela or in US, uh, but similar, I mean, to the GDC, I'm sure that everyone has legislation, just send a copy of that. And if you have like uh, eyelid test or anything equivalent, that will be great, I mean, to get a successful application. Okay. Vanya? Vanya? Vanya, do you hear us? Vanya? I can't hear you. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I am going to leave. I'm back. Okay. I will, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll keep reading. Okay. Next question. I had been working in Australia for the last 10 years and hold a specialist degree. Also passed MSc Surgical Science with distinction from US Edinburgh. Passed IELTS 10 years ago with seven band each. Two years ago, I was accepted by QMR for extractive and microsurgery without IELTS. Do I still need to do IELTS? Uh, no, no, you don't. Uh, oh, oh, I think you. you don't need it because you have already postgraduate uh, uh, certificate from English uh, uh, education center. So no, no need for IELTS. And you've been working in Australia. So yeah, no, you don't. Good experience as well. Yeah. So, all right, next. I'm very busy practitioner. Will the webinar be recorded accessible to uh, any time? Totally, yes. Um, we made them. Uh, we make them available a uh, few hours after they finish. And if you cannot uh, be there, obviously we always recommend to be there so you can have questions, you can interrupt with the, with the uh, speaker, etc. There will be uh, also uh, we do, some speaker will join us, or externals will join us, with, which will be very important. But they will be coming in the next time, and we try our best to accommodate uh, busy predictions like you. So we try to put like 5 o'clock p.m., 5 p.m. Um, British time, uh, etc. But obviously, all record, all uh, webinars will be recorded every time, anytime. So don't worry about it. Okay. From Sherry, do you think that in the near future you'll be offering a brand of course which has hands on coursing together with the online for theoretical part? <laughs> that's a good question that's our, that's our hope to be honest that's what we are working a lot with this uh, subject i totally agree with you that's what we hope in the future yes hi vanya can you see yeah you yes great yes good, sorry good. i couldn't hear anything so i had to leave and i came back yes. totally. all right so we okay. are here from andy if you want to continue uh, MD yeah. graduate from Philippines with 100% English taught course. Do I still need IELTS test? Again, Andy, uh, Andy Pratch, um, that's, you sh it depends if your course has been, uh, your uni university where, where you made the course has been accepted by our university, then no. But if, you, if it doesn't, then you, you have to. But if this will be happening once you have applied, 
So we have to look at it and we have to have discussion with admissions team. So first thing is, since you got so much knowledge and you can prove your, your English is good, I think the best thing to do is to apply and then we'll see what's gonna happen. I don't know if you want to add something, but that's, that's my advice. Okay, now Karen, uh, touch wood, if we fail the assessments, what happens next? How many ch ch chances to retake them? <laughs> uh, Karen, that's a good question. Okay, usually you have two chances. Um, to, and for all the assessments. Now, since they have a, each of the assessments have got a percentage, percentage out of it, now it depends how you how much you failed, what you failed, etc. Obviously, uh, the OSCE, the oral assessment is uh, compulsory to pass. So that's something else. But you have, again, two chances to pass it. I wouldn't be that scared not to pass it because... Um, once you get used to, to our content, to our delivery, then it's gonna be okay. And if you need any help, our academics will always, always be there. But then I don't know if you either or Vanya want to ask something about it. Yeah, I don't think people should be scared, you know, that they're gonna fail assessments. I think it is um, quite easy to follow, you know, course because the material is so, um, compact but and if you if you're really interested in the subject I think you can follow quite easily um yes there are some modules that are a little bit dry in terms of content but it's still important to know to be a good aesthetic practitioner um I don't think you would have problems really yeah. okay um Andy when will the 23 24 course open for application. All right. Um, <laughs> well, we are still open for 22, 23, Andy. Uh, so <laughs> you are very welcome to apply. Uh, if you want to know about the 23, 24, I believe from October on or November. So after we start in the, the course, which will be uh, early October, then from that time on, I think there will be um, a room for like two, three weeks. Then from that time on, you can start applying for the incoming year. Uh, the, the deadline for application is... Uh, hmm, that's a good question, Karen. Uh, today is the fourth. I would say... I would say the Fourth, the mi middle of September would be really the last chance to up the, the last chance to apply. Not to last chance, but to have to complete the application. Yeah, that's then the thing. Sorry, if even if it is that a deadline, and I think that if the students are interested, they start as soon as possible because you're gonna, always going to get stuck with on one document that needs to be presented. So start early, you know. Yeah. So. If you don't have your application completed and sent by middle of September, then it will be unlikely you're going to start mm -hmm. because we need time. You need time to start over. You need time to meet your, you meet your fellow students, meet your presentation for the course, the first models, the first webinars. Then if you miss them, it's going to be more, yeah, much it's, more difficult to start. It's diff not difficult to catch up, but it, is, it can be, you know, you're going to, I think it's just easier in the beginning when you get used to the first module um, it starts, you know, when it starts, right? And uh, we have some students that in the past they do need to catch up and it, it end up being quite a lot of material for you to study. So the earlier you start, the better, yes. Yeah. And the prospect like being assessed, a study doctor in the UK. Well, that's for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what to say here. 
Haida? Um, I think it's very good. Uh, uh, I mean, it's very good uh, addition to your medical degree or dental degree or nursing degree to be like an aesthetic clinician uh, in UK. The market is growing like uh, in... Uh, uh, if you compare like 1990 and 2020 regarding toxin, filler, PRP, PRF, energy-based uh, devices. So the marketing is there now and uh, hopefully like uh, we get new regulations by 2023, 2024. So it'll be all this uh, treatment will be like regulated by registered uh, clinician uh, in GMC, GDC, and MC. So yes, I think the future there. Uh, I really enjoy it. I mean, uh, in addition to my work as a dental surgeon, implant surgeons, I'm doing this like 50-50 now. Uh, so yes, why not? I don't yeah, know I think, how, uh, how well it's Yeah, really I think up. the prospect of, um, I've been practicing aesthetic medicine since 2007. So the prospect of, uh, uh, your career, not just in the UK, but anywhere in the world, when you do a course like that, uh, it improves, okay? Because this gives you that kind of, uh, the academic background, because the, anywhere you go, any conference that you know, you know what they're talking about. Um, and uh, I think anywhere in the world, we're quite limited with the hands-on courses. The, um, you go, you attend a, a weekend course, but you have to attend about 20 weekend courses to be proficient in, in certain things, in injection techniques. So I do think this will differentiate you from a doctor that has not done the course. So in terms of, uh, it's not just in the UK, but I think all over the world, this course will really help you. I hope you will answer the, your question, uh, Karen. So, Ludmila, uh, how I understood these courses give us more theoretical than practical knowledge, aren't they? Uh, no, okay. knowledge, I think you're going to have both knowledge, right? You're going to have the, the theory. And uh, when we do the theory, we also talk about the practical aspect. What this course will not give you is uh, you know, you're not going to have a, a weekly hands-on courses. You're not going to have, a, you know, but you everything that you learn, you will be able to understand why. And we do link the practical with the theory always. I think that's it. Uh, would you like to add anything, Hayda? Yes, I can add just one thing here about the anatomy. I mean, the practical anatomy in, uh, webinar that uh, is run, run by uh, Professor Kutufana, that we have we a weekly webinar. Uh, with uh, directly with Professor Kutufana. So he shows our, his cases, I mean, his practical anatomy, not, I mean, the theoretical anatomy, which is very, very important and interested for us as a, a clinician. Uh, so it's not, I mean, theoretical. I mean, uh, I mean, Vanya, she was very clear with the answer. We have to differentiate between knowledge and hands-on. So we have the knowledge, the theoretical knowledge, the webinars, we can see the injection technique. So we have live um, uh, videos, so we can see how to inject in the lip and the cheeks, I mean, how to deal with some complication as well. So yes, we have all this um, uh, background or all these items in our uh, platform. But however, we don't have this hands-on or the weekly or the daily or the monthly hands-on. Uh, so it's not, I mean, what I mean with the knowledge, the safe and effective knowledge, theoretically and practically, but mm -hmm. without hands-on. Yeah, just and just to remind everyone, this is an online course, so. Yeah. <laughs> Academic and thanks God, and thanks God that course. we have two yeah. to th or three days, clinical days per year, yeah. which is very, very interesting. I mean, to, yeah. to come and to join and to see uh, people from different countries uh, and yeah. which pioneer in their in their in their treatment, and uh, you can have a connection. I mean, you can go and do fellowship with them. I did this before, to be honest. I have some connection with some people in Italy. I went there and did fellowship with them. Uh, and this course is very good networking as well with different people from different yeah. background. Yeah. So, and also you mentioned about, hey, the, uh, Dr. Hassan mentioned about the Professor Kotofana's course. This elevates the course to a level that, you know, it's very difficult to match, not just in the UK or anywhere in the world. You know, we have weekly webinars with Professor Sebastian Kotofana, which is, you know, 
um, I would say, I would no, like to use the god, but is <laughs> you know in terms of anatomy, uh, it can't get any better. And so you have a that's not recorded webinar. Is that if you attend, you can ask your questions. So that's not just reading uh, um, about anatomy. So that's something that it differentiates our course also. You know this uh, um, the delivery of the anatomy. Um, plus, I plus, think we have I we have plus, plus, I can add something here. In our model update now, we have interactive videos for each treatment modalities. So you yeah. can see the injection technique for toxin, mm -hmm. injection technique for filler, yeah. injection technique for PRP, PRF, mm -hmm. even for uh, radius and, yeah. uh, and uh, this advanced treatment. So absolutely, I mean, you will feel... Uh, yeah secure when you see these videos and that uh, good combination with the theoretical knowledge however yeah. i mean the hands-on it's it's your responsibility now i mean yeah. to start so and to practice what you what you mentioned now uh, Heide, is really the practical knowledge but that you need to know how to do it you know you need to do you're going to do with a cannula with a needle or angulation etc but we are holding your hand and you can't expect that they're watching a video you will be able to go straight to a life mode. I think you have responsibilities and duty of care as a medical professional. So um, I think that's, you know, very clear now, right? And this is, I mean, this is the process for any education. In medical exactly. school, then to the school, you will not practice yeah. directly to own the patient. You need, yeah. I mean, the simulation first. I mean, mm. some background, theoretical and um, uh, practical background. And then you can start with the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another question is about, uh, Andy asked, uh, the lecture class is recorded and accessible anytime, right? Yes. yes. If we do have a webinar, they are all recorded. They may not be available immediately because there is a, an IT team that needs to make this available to students. So, uh, but yes, they are available. You can access anytime. And is there a fixed time to do MCQ exam? How um, how uh, how long? We have the, the we have a now? deadline. We have a deadline for all the assessments, obviously. Um, no, I think he means he probably means a fixed time, meaning an yeah. hour when you open. You do, yeah. Yes. Uh, so basically, we have you have to complete all the assessment by a deadline, and mm -hmm. specific for the MCQs they are timed so yeah you have to finish them uh, within an hour by by a deadline by a due date so yeah. that's if, and that's i think that the, the rules are very clear when you when you read you know it's always going to provide you a handbook and uh, yeah. so you read it so i think when you open the mcqs then that's it isn't it you have to uh, you can't just go back and because then it would be very easy for some students because then you can go and and um, uh, go back Check to around. questions that you didn't know, that's not fair, right? Yes. Um, okay, if a student applying, for, applying from abroad misses some important documentation, or if you need some translated information, will you let us know so we can complete the submission? Yes, the straight answer is yes. You apply, mm -hmm. then admission will contact you if there is something missing. Then, then from there you're gonna build up. So you're gonna be asked, I don't know, the IELTS test or maybe a reference. Sometimes some reference is missing, so they ask you to complete the reference, so they ask your referee to contact them. It's pretty straightforward, no nothing to worry about. But yeah, they always contact you if something missing. Uh, and, and yes, you can do MCQ tests anytime before the deadline. Anytime before the deadline, anytime you want. It could be midnight to nine o'clock in the morning to nine in the evening. That is totally up to you. This is an online course. This is totally up to you. We can help you as much as we can. But this is um, a self experience and it's going to be. And it, it, it's a great experience, to be honest. But my, my advice, don't leave it to the last minute because you have MCQs, uh, three set of MCQs and assignments. 
and we are very busy practitioners. We are working every day. So try to manage it in very, very good manner. So you can sort everything, uh, not at the same day of submission, maybe two or three days prior to submission. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. I cannot see any more questions. Do we have any more? Anyone? Want to ask us anything? Any question? Any more question? I think we have three minutes. Plus, Ettore, if you can leave your uh, email address ah, yes. for Academy Plastic mm -hmm. Surgery so they can co communicate with us. And this is my email. Anything you need, any if you need to ask some question to any of our academics, to Dr. Almedo, Dr. Hassan, or our director, me personally, any question about um, admissions, what you need, we are here to help. So no more questions? No? Okay. I think it was great today because there are loads of uh, questions about admission, etc. It's important that it's all clarified so they can go ahead with that. We just, uh, um, we're really looking forward to see you all, you know, in our new uh, course next year, or well, this year, right? Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, please just uh, email it, or if it's something that is related to the modules, or if he can always uh, defer that to us. Yeah, very happy thank to do you. it. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.